Good day, good day, everybody. We're here in the shop, fixing up a few things, getting ready to go back on the road. So over here on the passenger side of the truck, this cubby hole latch has seen the end of its days. Look at how rusty that is, eh? The spring inside there uh, just disintegrated. So I went out and got uh, new ones. Ordered them through PBX. And I'm gonna install them on both sides. They were getting a little rusty anyways. If you go around and look at this side of the truck, I wanted to replace this one just for like aesthetics and looks. Like, see how the rust is gathering in there already? So we're gonna replace this thing as well too. It's super easy to do. It's just four bolts. You can see them here. One, two, three, four. And they just go straight through. You screw it on, hook this up, move the lock from here to here. I was hoping that a new lock was gonna come with it, but alas. I am not that fortunate. I guess that'd be even more expensive. If you're wondering how much one of these costs, this is $150. I got two of them. Yay! So now that I've got uh, the latch out of there, I'm just soaking it with a bit of bull snot from over here. I'm just using the visible. Just gonna clean it off a little bit, wipe it off so that the new one is installed on a clean surface. May as well, since I have it off, may as well clean underneath there, right? We got the new one installed, just screwing her in. And it was pretty easy. So I had to disconnect, uh, or disconnect, or take off this back piece. There's usually a cover that's over this right here. Just took that off, it exposed this. There's four nuts on the back there. Take the old one out, put the new one in. Trucker Josh is a mechanic. Just like that. Who needs service technicians? Right? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not very good at fixing. I'm not as good at... I can fix some things. The goofies I'm being... Uh, I, I'm not always the best at fixing big problems to do with the motor, like mechanic work and stuff. Fixing stuff like this is easy. This, lights, you know, anything, nuts and bolts, anyone can fix these things. You save a lot in labor if you do these things yourself. If you own your own truck, you should be prepared to do these things on your own. Because I would be charged at least an hour. At least, to get those to replace. That's $130 that I didn't have to pay, plus tax, out of my pocket. So I, I made $130 today, or I saved $130 just by doing it myself. There's some things though that I do need their help on. And sometimes paying the labor costs is worth it to me because I want to spend time at home with my family. So it's a balancing act. Sometimes there's stuff that I can do, but you know, my family needs me at home. Well, then I pay someone else to do it for me. How much is your time worth? How much is your family worth? You know, my family is worth quite a bit to me. So when they need me at home, usually I try to get someone else to fix the bigger things for me. But these little things, Add a little bit of extra time today. Why not? I can do it myself. It's... We got one more to do. One more to do. Other side. So if you want to know what happened, I kind of explained it already, but I can show you now. This thing here is on a spring, right? You pull the latch on the other side, it goes in, and then a spring pushes it back out. That spring is in here. Now, for some reason, on my old one, it stopped pushing back out, and this thing wouldn't stay closed. And I had Chevy's uh, steps in here, right? I wouldn't stay closed, so I pried back this metal piece here. You're not supposed to, but I did. Pried it back and the spring literally sort of crumbled out. It didn't even pop out, it just crumbled out and disintegrated in my hands. There's some of it probably still down here I gotta clean up. So it was no good, so I replaced the whole thing now. Now it's good to go. It's the next day, actually it's the next night, and uh, we're headed out on a trip with a familiar trailer. 
So we dropped it here last week, thinking that someone else was going to continue with it to Saskatoon. <laughs> Silly me, turns out I'm taking it to Saskatoon. I'm the driver who's taking it all the way to Saskatoon. So I took all my equipment off, right? Like we usually do. I could have left it tied down, so now I have to tie it down again and then start heading out to Saskatoon. I'm leaving tonight just to get a little bit of a head start. It's a nine hour drive, but I want to see how far I can get tonight yet. Uh, just to uh, get the wheels moving, you know, get the blood pumping, so to speak. So let's get hooked up, let's get her tied down again, and let's get going. It's a pretty easy load to tie down. I mean, it's just three dumps. 8,000 pounds each, so two straps per dump is uh, good enough. I had three on each on the way up. Ah, oh, better to be safe than sorry, right? I wish I would have left the tide down. Had I known, right? Had I known. Oh well, it's not going to take long at all. I'm not sure how far I'm gonna to get tonight. I was hoping to at least get to Brandon. That's about two and a half hours from here. If I wanted to get into Saskatchewan, maybe to Mooseman. I mean, I, I was gonna go all the way to Balgoni at first, but that's about six hours from here. So it's already a little bit late. All right, Saskatoon's not getting any closer. And she's all tied down again. I thought about just going two straps per bucket or per dump, you know, because that's all I need. They're 8,000 pounds each. I only need two straps. Two straps cover me up to 11,000 pounds, 10,800 pounds. It will be plenty enough, right? But I'm looking at it and I'm like, mm, you know what? You know what? I better set a good example and just, I, I, I just better, I just better go over overboard. Yeah, I just better just throw another one on there. That is my golden rule. If you think it might need one more, put another one on. Maybe put another two on. In this case, I just put another one on each. Another three on the whole load. <sighs> Did it need it? Nah. Did I feel like it needed it? Yeah. I mean, it just looks better this way, right? You roll over the scales, and they're looking at that. They're like, man, this trucker knows what he's doing. He's, he's, he's gone above and beyond to make sure that his load is safe for the highway. We're going to give him the green light. At least that's what I hope goes through their minds. That's what I'm going for anyway. <laughs> okay, we're all loaded up, we're tied down. Let's go. We got to the Flying J in Portage La Prairie. This is just a little card lock here. And behind those trucks out there, there's a little building. It's not 24 hours, but this is where we're gonna spend the night tonight. We're parked along the back, I guess in the back row. Lighting up the night a little bit back here. 
Originally, my plan was to make it to Brandon, Manitoba tonight. That's about an hour and a half from here, a little further down the road. But, you know, as I was coming up to Portage here, I saw the open parking spot, and I was thinking, it doesn't really matter if I stop here or if I push it down the road a little bit further. It doesn't change my arrival time to Saskatoon. Saskatoon's about a seven-hour drive, seven, eight-hour drive from here tomorrow. And if I go to Brandon, okay, so it's a, a six- or seven-hour drive. It doesn't change the time when I get there tomorrow, and I don't think I'm gonna get there with enough time to be unloaded before end of day. They weren't expecting me tomorrow anyway, they are expecting me the day after tomorrow in the morning. So it doesn't really matter if we get there after hours tomorrow, we deliver the next day, and we're still there when we're expected to be there. I just like being in a day early. I like, I like pushing it, you know? But we'll see, we'll, we'll start from here first thing in the morning tomorrow and we'll see where we get. If we get there a day, a day early, good. If not, well, at least we're not behind schedule, right? So we'll start right here tomorrow, and I'll see you then.